Welcome to Circle Back to Sunday here at Victory Hill. We are so excited that you're here to join us as we circle back and dive deep into the message from Sunday Sermon. You are going to get to meet some of our pastoral team on an intimate level as well as other members here at Victory Hill as we circle back to Sunday Sermon. Welcome back to Circle Back to Sunday. We are in Season 2, Episode 3. Woo-hoo. Where's Mason with our... Bow, bow, bow. Bow, 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 bow. He's got our... Usually with our sound... Where Where is Mason? He was preaching. Bringing the word. Mm, That's was. right. That's right. So we are back for Episode 3. And if you are joining us for the first time, I'm Emily Pettigo, and I'm here with Bethany Graves. Bethany. Me, that's me. And the... The Amy. Amy. Hey. hey, I don't know how I earned the title of the. the I don't either, but Amy I love Payne, it. But I I'm do like starting it. to embrace it. I love it. <laughs> She's like, yeah, the yeah. Amy Payne. The Amy Payne. Ain't nobody. Yeah. Her Ain't no other Amy Payne appearance. That's on the right. Podcast. Look, it's her first time. Feel I know. like I'm with royalty. Aww. We're gonna try to be nice. I have arrived. <laughs> no, She's I, arrived. She's made it. The best thing is, is this is gonna be so funny, and she's not even gonna be mean to me like Mason usually is. It's well, so gonna be great. I don't love it. speak too soon. <laughs> no. no, that's a strong statement. No. Everybody nice up here today. <laughs> we started our new sermon series, um, and it is we went from go and tell mm-hmm. to come and see. Mm-hmm. That's right, because Bethany was calling it go and tell that. Go and tell that. <laughs> go and Which tell that. On the go official that. sermon, come and see this. Uh-huh. Come and see, see this. Ooh, okay, all right. You gotta say that and this though. This that might be a t-shirt. Come uh, and see come this. On. I'm I'm here for can it. You know it? I love a good t-shirt. Go and mm-hmm. tell. Go and tell that. And Go ahead and tell that. <gasps> Come see this. Uh, let me write <laughs> the front and the back. <laughs> let me write my notes. Uh, Amy helps with our merch around here. She'd be she the brainchild. The Amy Payne who does everything here. That's right. At Victor Hill. And we love her. But uh, Mason did a great job today. He did do a great job. I, he came out, man. One, worship was on fire. Fire. It was so good. We we went off course a little bit, which yep. is great. We love to see the spirit move. So if you haven't watched mm-hmm. the sermon, go back. Even if it's just for the worship. Yeah. Because <laughs> it was pretty fire today. It was so good. Um, the Lord was moving. He was. But Mason killed it today. And it was, what is your purpose? Um, he did title it, The Question of Purpose. I like So, that. you know, we all struggle with that, I think. Um, mm-hmm. Knowing what our identity is or what we're supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. And um, he answered a lot of those questions with uh, the way Jesus approached it with the disciples. Yeah. Because that was his people. And I think that's where, like, we kind of go wrong because it's we put what we're supposed to be doing instead of what we are to do. Like, you put so much on the word or on the word of other people mm-hmm. about what you're supposed to be doing, even if you correlate it to this message, like how you're supposed to get people to Jesus instead of just simply what God says, who you are, what you are, who he made you to be. I mean, he technically mapped it out. He did. He, he did. did so like, good. So in my notes today, that was one of the things that I wrote down that really stuck out to me, probably the most, yeah. was that Jesus really broke it down in two easy parts. I mean, yep. two simple. Yeah. yeah. So like, simple. Boom, boom. Yep. Yeah. 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 And I feel like oftentimes, like, we overcomplicate yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Do we? And, but, <laughs> absolutely. But just to be reminded today that it really yeah. is two simple parts so if i'm struggling on like what my purpose is yeah it, it's really is that simple yeah. love god and love others that is so comforting yeah, yeah. to know it's that easy. it's that mm-hmm. easy yep because like mason even said there's over 600 technically 600 and something commandments yeah i wrote down 613 but then that's, i was second that's what i got no that's what okay, i got too. Good. Whoop, mm-hmm. confirmation 613 all right so see i was listening mason mm-hmm. um and he said that 365 of those are what we shouldn't do, what we don't need to do, Mm -hmm. which I'm like, 613, that's overwhelming. Yeah. And I can see where even people who are, you know, in a relationship with Christ can get overwhelmed and not be sure Mm -hmm. because we forget. Mm -hmm. It's just two primary simple things. The rest Mm -hmm. just falls in line after that. Yeah. So, and he he gave a quote by Mark Twain. Oh, I loved it. Listen, oh, Mark Twain. Oh, I loved it. Oh, Marky Twain. Mm -hmm. The two most important days in your life are the day you're born. And the day you find out why. That's so good. I love that. I was like, okay, Mark Twain coming in here decades later with mm-hmm. some wisdom. The day I you love find it. Out why. I just love that. Well, because love that so much. Our birthdays are a big deal. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Kind of like my birthday. Oh, when you make it to another birthday deal. every year, it should That's be a it. celebration. That's, it. That's exactly it. should be it. a celebration. So we were in Matthew today, Matthew 22, 34 through 40. I'm going to read it really quickly. Don't judge me on my. 
denunciations. Mm -hmm. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they came together, and one of them, an expert in the law, asked a question to test him, as in Jesus. Teacher, which command in the law is the greatest? He said to him, Love your Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. This is the greatest and most important command. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets depend on these two commands. Like that simple, mm-hmm. boom, point blank, period. He didn't add anything else. He didn't, there was no conditions. He just, he just wrote it down. And that's it. So he, <laughs> I love his first point. He said, Jesus is not afraid of our questions. Mm-hmm. So these people were coming at him mm-hmm. asking, even before these, they were asking him like an overabundance of questions. And as even people who maybe don't follow God or even Christ followers, I know we all have questions at some times. Mm-hmm. Like, well, well, what if this happens? Or, or will he still love me if I've done this? Or, you know, so I love that Mason said, Jesus is not afraid of our questions. And I wrote down, for all of us who are real country, he ain't scared. He ain't scared. He ain't, scared. <laughs> he ain't a bit scared. He ain't scared. Mm-mm. He ain't scared. Yeah, and I think it. I think it's important that we, you know, we talk about like he's not. He's not intimidated no. by any question that we no. have, Mm-mm. and those aren't just questions about our purpose. Mm-hmm. Those can be questions about our, you know, doubts, our fears. Yep. If you're struggling with your faith, mm-hmm. like Jesus welcomes those questions. Not yeah. only is he not intimidated by those questions. He yeah. welcomes those yeah. questions. He wants I agree. he wants those questions because that's how you build a relationship yeah. mm-hmm. with him. But mm-hmm. I think people don't ask for the fear of it, first off. But mm-hmm. second off, I feel like they feel like that I don't know how to um, understand if he gives an answer. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to mm-hmm. know if thing. he's like saying in an audible voice. Is he writing it on a billboard? You know, these types of things. When in all honesty, like, it could be I ask a question of God, you know, God, how does this happen? Or why does this happen? Or blah, blah, blah. But yet my next conversation with Amy could be, you know, explaining something in her life or her testimony or what she's learning or her expectation. And it answers that question. Like I, God can use so many different avenues, so many different places and people that we get intimidated to ask a question because we don't know how or that we could know when he answers. Right. And in reality, I think he's like, he's not intimidated by the question. He's ready to answer and he's going to put it in a language that we understand. understand, Yeah. I think he meets us where we're at as bethany said a couple podcasts ago that um jesus talks similarly to her yes he says hey girl go ahead and do that go ahead or hey girl don't go ahead and do that Mm-mm, that's the way don't. my jesus you, talks <laughs> you better not uh, uh-uh. uh-uh. no ma'am <laughs> <laughs> I think all of our Jesuses might talk similarly. That's my Jesus. That's how he does. He knows ain't gonna listen no matter what. So better be better be eh. you know, the snap of the finger. That's the way it is. Um I did put on mine too that Jesus will all, always give you what more than what you bargained for. Oh yeah. So like sometimes you ask a question of him or you ask for clarification on something, but he's gonna give you a little bit extra. Takes it deeper, yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love that. Because he's not gonna leave you where you are. Like that's the point of it. Like it's not even just like getting to Jesus that he doesn't leave you where you are. But when you're seeking him, when mm-hmm. you're wanting to know more, he's not just gonna leave you in the desert. Like he's gonna allow you to have food to eat and allow you to have something to drink when you're thirsty. And I think that people just don't think like uh, I need to make sure I do this before I get here, or it needs to be a theological question to Jesus. No, like some days are just hard, and yep. you have to be like, why was today so sucky? Like, why was today the day that my fear beat me over the head? Yeah. You know, those types of things. And some more than often, more often than not, when I do those types of things, have those conversations with him, I get more than I bargain for. Yeah. And I think that that speaks volumes for like Mason talking about our purpose, right? Because. I'm just going to use Amy as an example because last week you and Trey um, gave us a message that was incredible as a lot of your story. And would you have years ago thought when you – I'm sure you did ask God, what's your purpose? Mm-hmm. Did you believe it's where you were going to be now? Oh, absolutely not. Um, so if you would have asked me back then, like, what my purpose would have been today, yeah, there's no way I could have answered that. Yeah. Um, I mean, Jesus absolutely – exceeded any expectation right. mm-hmm. I had in my life. Yeah. And um 
you know, a lot of times I loved how I kind of pulled something out a little bit different this morning. Okay, that's uh, why we're doing this. <laughs> we when, when Mason was talking about how they were arguing. Yeah. First oh, of all, yeah. can I say I'm so glad you read the scripture because I struggle with sad just siege. I, you know, I can't say it. So I'm <laughs> I so think glad I said it right. But uh, sad just siege. Yeah, mm-hmm. Those guys. That's the, it. So they were the sad, those, yeah. sadies, those people. Those sadies. people <laughs> were all arguing, <laughs> and like it just kind of like what hit me was. Jesus revealed those commandments. Jesus revealed the truth and purpose mm-hmm. out of opposition that day. Yeah, yeah. And how, you know, a lot of times in our lives, it's out of opposition that we find Ooh. our purpose. That's yeah, good. that's yeah. great. And so a lot of times I get asked that a lot. Like yeah. when we sit around tables in those rooms yep. and, you know, we're talking those rooms. Yes. And we're being vulnerable and we're yeah. talking mm-hmm. about parts and we're redefining ourselves and we're like, what is your purpose? Well, a lot of times it comes out of what your opposite oppo- opposition was. Yep. Yeah. So, and like that, if that's what your passion is, yep. is that's what that's a really Absolutely. a lot of times is a good place to look for your purpose. Man, write that down, somebody. Well, I mean, you can see that in your life. You can see yes. that in almost everybody's life. Like yeah. the yeah. opposition that was met, you met was the was addiction, was you know, yeah. um, loneliness, was uh, self worth being at a negative number. You know, mm-hmm. those types of things. And you are like the best at walking in that purpose. Like the amount of people that you come oh, in contact with, it's that insane. you know, you've changed the course of their life by bringing them to Jesus through those different avenues right there. I mean, you're a daily encouragement to me. I know that as far as my worth. And I, I definitely think that you found your purpose in those opposition. Oh, yeah. And I think loving God and loving people. That's right. I Which, listen, mm-hmm. that's the two main commandments. Mm-hmm. Loving God and loving people. Amy mm-hmm. Payne's out here doing it. That's why that's she right. is the Amy Payne. That's the that's why so that kind of talks about i can't remember which i think what was the second this is you want the second yeah, point give me the second i get me with you girl i got you it. god desires to have a relationship with you mm, we discover our purpose through relationships boom mm-hmm. we do first with god then Amen. with others yep um we're not uh we don't discover our purpose through how much stuff we have Mm -hmm. or our job titles Mm -hmm. or how much we accomplish. We discover our purpose through relationships with others. Yeah. Yeah. That that just blew my mind. Mm -hmm. Like I love that. Yep. First with God and and yep. then with others, and that he he wants that. Like you were talking about seeking him, and I'm in my head. This is just how my brain works. I was like, man, God is the worst at hide and seek. Yeah. He'd be ready found. He's ready. He's out there. He's like, <laughs> he's like the little kid that has their feet hanging out. Sardines from the is not the, it's not the game for him. Mm-mm. It's not. So I'm just saying he's he ready. Found. He's out there. He's waiting for you. If, he you, be if found. you're he's, he's, I like when he talked about the ownership of that too. Mm-hmm. Like, um, he, he related it to marriage and how God in the Bible, oh, a lot of times a good job he that. did like Jesus, uh, explains the relationship with us through the explanation of a marriage or whatever, mm-hmm. a bride and a groom. Um, um, and that we, you know, we don't share well. <laughs> I don't share. I don't share my husband. You know that type of thing. I'm not and a great the sharer. ownership of it that, like, I am his and he is mine. Yes. Like the the relief that that gives, and just correlating that with the um, the relationship that I have with God. Like I am his and he is mine, and that is mine. And it also makes it a little bit like. Um, I don't know why I feel like fighting people today, but I do. She's like, so um, feisty. <laughs> I know. Maybe it's because I haven't eaten. I need food. I'm a little hang- hungry. Are you hungry? I'm getting a little hungry. Somebody get this girl. I'm gonna get a Kit Kat. <laughs> There's the a banana out. pudding. Uh, oh, Rice Krispie call treat. Call my name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like, you know, when someone comes at you talking, like if someone came at me talking about Gabe, I'd be ready to throw punches. Mm-hmm. Like I would be ready I to catch like a charge. You would be real. out of body. I would. I would. It would. It would fly all over me. Even when like people come at him from a way that he doesn't even see or doesn't care like he's not threatened like not at all but I'm like they was talking about you like that was I don't like that like it makes me upset because he is mine like Mm -hmm. that is a part of me and it feels the same way with with my relationship with Jesus like somebody comes at that talking about like this is what he did or this is what he did or blah 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 like it's like a holy fire rises up inside Mm -hmm. of you you're like no I gotta tell you something this is what he did this is why he did it this is how he did it and it does it does call out that purpose in you because I 
I could say that people talking about like that Jesus makes you feel lonely or that you have that feeling after religion or whatever, like that would be a holy fire for me because I, I know that there's more than that. I know Absolutely. that there's more than, you know, being lonely is not a fruit of Jesus. It's, it's community and feeling loved and encouraged yeah. and having a body in a village beside you. Like I can get up and like ready to catch a charge over that, but, but because it's ownership, like I feel yeah. ownership to that relationship that God has with me. Yeah. And when you yeah. share that, the authenticity yeah. behind it, mm-hmm. like that's yes. a real relationship. Yeah. Yep. And I feel like our culture today is right the opposite. Absolutely. Like we passive. Are, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yes. It's, it's, I feel like a lot of our relationships have lost its authenticity because it might They're be transactional. A, yes. It's what, how you're perceived yeah. Yeah. versus how you really are. Yep. I, I think we find it hard to really show our true selves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because we, we have to be what people think we should be. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. But if we are going to love others as we love ourselves, then we have to, sh- we have to produce our yep. real selves. Yep. Not how many followers we have yep. or right. how many likes we got on Facebook today. Mm-hmm. Like we have to be really intentional with our relationships. Yep. They have to be yep. tangible relationships. Yep. So yep. I just love that reminder today. I do too. I agree. And I love that you, she's ready. She, I was. She's I don't know. I'm ready, ready, ready to get behind I was ready you, girl. Fight. Like, I'm like, I got her back. That's just because I'm hungry. It's okay. <laughs> I'm a little hungry now, too. Thank you. Bro. Don't Welcome. talk about Gabe when she's hungry. <laughs> Note to self. I wouldn't talk about him at all. <laughs> 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 I feel like even if she had a burrito in her I hand, that would be in my sunshine. face. <laughs> I am a ray of sunshine. I am a ray of sunshine. We love her. Um, also, I'm pretty sure she would fight you. Mm-hmm. But anyways, I highlighted a thing that I never pulled out of this. I mean, we've all read this and heard this before, but when he read verse 37, he said, love your Lord God with all your heart, all your soul, and all of your mind. And Mason made a point to pull that out, that it wasn't an or. It wasn't just one of those things or a couple of those things. It's Mm -hmm. all of those. Mm -hmm. He wants it all. And I had never really thought about it in that context, Um, but he wants us to love him with everything we have. And that, I think people see that as intimidating, mm-hmm. and it's it's a lot easier if mm-hmm. you just literally fall into those two commandments mm-hmm. and just follow along with it. Um, but we have to love ourselves before we can truly love anybody else like Jesus. Anybody else get a gut punch from that? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Well, in the part of the end Step of that, on toes the, today. Uh, verse 40 that says the entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Mm-hmm. I think that that's where people in religion get caught up because they are so worried about toeing the line. So worried about like making sure that all those check mark boxes are done Man. and we're not, you're not, we're not messing up this commandment or this commandment. But in all honesty, like you can think, uh, do not covet, do not murder, do not, all these things. I can't do any of those if I'm loving God and I'm loving people. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. they really just yep. disintegrate because mm-hmm. I'm loving God and I'm loving people. And if I live my life like that, all these other things just happen. Mm-hmm. Like and they, all he's asking is for us to set those down. Yeah. And just repent. And I think that's another thing is that people think it's so hard to to change their life. Was yeah. it hard? Yes. It was hard for you, was it not? Hard to make a lot of life changes and turn was. your life around? Mm-hmm. But once you did it and you set it down, did it become a little easier? Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And yeah. I, I think that it's just perceived because you said religiously. Mm-hmm. And that's why I love that Mason and our teaching team talk about a relationship yeah. with God. Yeah. When I'm praying, like I used to hate when I grew up and you had to like, it was almost like you're pr- praying King James Version. There is nothing wrong with King James Version that is for some people. But it, from a mom, I always felt like she uses. it had to be pretty. Like mm-hmm. it had to sound pretty. And I had to throw some extra THs on the end mm-hmm. of some words. And like, well, no, I just talked to him. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's how I, I mm-hmm. like last night I had to walk out on my porch because the situation where I said, well, it's me again. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to need you to give me some, like, wash me over with some calmness right mm-hmm. now. Cause I was like, Bethany, I just want to throw some hands. Yeah. Um, lay hands on me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> lay, hands. lay hands on people right. in Jesus name. But that's how I talked. And I, I think <laughs> people are scared of that because yeah. like you said, our relationships aren't as deep. If Mm-mm. we can't have a deep relationship with Christ, how can I come to somebody and have a deep relationship mm-hmm. with them? Like, no, we can't be superficial in any of no. any of those areas. No. And I I love that that that's how Mason approached this today. Yeah, I agree. Um, and the, his last point was 
building a healthy healthy relationships requires valuing other people. Mm-hmm. And that is another we gotta break that tradition of religion. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I wrote I wrote something down on this. I got a little something. something. She goes, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. So I love how um, you know, he tied it up and said, you know, Jesus came for everybody. Mm-hmm. And so what that means is there is nothing, you know, one of the things that we say at the Dream Center all the time. It's actually, you know, it's our mission statement. It's what drives us is that we believe nothing is too lost or broken for God to heal. Mm-hmm. And to mm-hmm. know that Jesus came for everybody because everybody. he loves you, he sees you, yep. and he values you. Yep. Yep. Those are the three things that he said. So yep. when, he, when Mason said he values you, mm-hmm. I looked up value mm-hmm. in the dictionary. Okay, And so to, to be valued is to be held in high regard and beneficial. Mm. So... If he values us, yep. then we are we are in high regard with him. But here's the best part: we are beneficial to him. I got coaches, so we have I a. I can't see him, but we what? have a. Ah. He has a. <laughs> he has a purpose. Yes. for us, we are beneficial. Yes. Bring it, Amy. He's yes. going to use us for his good. That's yes. He's going to use us for his glory, and and our testimony, mm-hmm. I think, is one of the first things. That he can use. Anybody can use. Anybody's testimony can be used. I think our purpose can always be tied back to our testimony. Absolutely. That's real good. You got listen. I know. I'm covered in them. (laughs) Go ahead, girl. Go ahead, (laughs) preach, Amy. Look, I come to church with some good stuff. Yeah, she did. She literally walked in and was like, like, look. Look, look. (laughs) The spirit was was all over it. So good. It was. But I think the hard part for us to to see that value in ourselves is because of what he said. We don't value ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't see ourselves like God does. Mm -hmm. And if I value myself as self-worth as low as the low, then, like, I can't can't value others the way I need to. I can't put a value in him that I need to. But he sees it in me, so why can't I see it in myself? See, I wrote down what you said in my Bible. I wrote wrote down, he loves me. Mm -hmm. He sees me. He values me. And I know that seems silly because, like, some people do, like, words of affirmation, like, to yourself works for some people. I mean, it's a kind of a proven thing. But I think that... Because Mason said you, he was telling it to us. He's trying to teach us. But if we flip that around and we circle back and we say me, mm-hmm. I'm valued. I'm beneficial. God used me. Mm-hmm. And I have prayed before, God, give me the eyes to see what you see. Mm-hmm. Because we even had a comment online and, and someone said, well, what if my purpose is already gone? And I'm like, you still breathing, but You got breath yeah. in your lungs. Yeah, you yeah. got you purpose. Saw, which actually was early in the sermon. So I said, just hold on. Mm-mm, just hang just in there. Hold on there for the ending. <laughs> like, put a pin in it. <laughs> so, <laughs> something that I've even struggled with in my own life, and I think a lot of people do, is you know, Jesus exceeded our expectations. He did mm-hmm. that those days. You know, he give we he didn't give him one. He gave him two commandments. Mm-hmm. And uh, but I think we hit that one. We love God. He 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 manifests mm-hmm. himself in our life. We see radical life change. We love him. We sold out in him. But we're confident yep. in the Lord. Yeah. But then if we have to love others the way we love ourselves, we lack in confidence of ourselves. It's true. So we're mm-hmm. confident in the Lord, but we're not confident in and us. And he uses us. Yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yep. I get our that. confidence is, our confidence is mm-hmm. not yep. found in him. Mm-hmm. We're and confident in him, but our confidence is not yep. found. And sometimes yep. I think the religious side of it is hard not to judge people. Like Trey said, I mean, Trey was very honest. A week ago, yeah, talking about how he was a little judgy. Mm-hmm. He had his judgy eyes on, yeah, and that I find is a struggle for me sometimes. Yeah, depends yeah. on the person. I'm going to take up for him though. So he he was. Why'd you look homely? Yeah, he well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. So that, that that judginess. I mean, like it really. He called it judgy, but it really was a fear and a protection mm-hmm. over his brother. Yeah, yes, of, of Larry. Yeah. Which is which is. Great. I got your back. I got your back, Trey. I got your back. I'll, somehow or another, this will turn on me that you had his back. <laughs> somehow. Also, Mason, just a reminder, Amy is his bestie. <laughs> no, look. I'm think, shaka wait, that, that, fla- that That flame. That, that flame. flame. Okay, that, go ahead. Yeah, that claim to fame. Uh, I think everybody's <laughs> Trey's best friend. So when you say that, you're just one of a plethora. No, they ain't. People, Have you so. seen Trey's face sometimes? No, Not what? everybody his best friend. No, it's his brother. <laughs> But Noah is his brother. And Noah is jealous. his brother. Um, but I think that it's hard not to be judgy sometimes based off of like our own relationships with people. Like there's people I struggle with mm-hmm. that I'm like, you know better. Yeah. And it's hard for me to like just want to not shake them because I do love them so much that I'm like, you know better. And God wants you to just 
do better. And yeah. it's hard to let that go because there's some some parts of religious people. It's like, ah, nope, they going to hell. Uh, and it's hard to let that go. It's hard to absolutely. shake that. Mm-hmm. And, I'm, you know, that's just me being transparent. I feel like I'm always a work in progress. Oh, I sure. feel like God's still providing what my purpose is. Mm. He ain't done with me. I'm still here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what my purpose might be for today may not be the same thing tomorrow. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to trust him in it. Yeah. And we're going we gonna to drop the judgy eyes. Well, and one of the things he said is God bankrupt heaven to get to you I and to show that. you value. And I just love that. I do love that for so many reasons. But the one is when you talk value, your your mind automatically goes to money. Money. Mm-hmm. Like goes to the value of a dollar, blah, blah, blah. But to say that God bankrupt heaven by giving his only son so that you could see value, so that you would know that he loves you, that he cares for you, that he wants more for you. Like, that's a big deal. That's and good. I mean, if you can read this Bible in a million different ways and know like how uh, wealthy Jesus is. He doesn't need money. He doesn't need that value of what we think of value, but he was willing to bankrupt and give it all mm-hmm. just, just for me. I mean, at any time he also could have just stopped what was happening to him. Absolutely. And he was just like, this is my purpose. But he did it just to show me value. Yeah. Like that's, that's an intimate God. That's a, that's, I mean, there's like a bajillion people on this planet, but he did it just for me. He did it just for you. Did it just for you. You know what I mean? Like that's, I don't know. That, that was a bajillion. Bajillion. I don't really know how many. I didn't want to quote it, but I know it's a bajillion. It is. Specifically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A bajillion. <laughs> and one. Because uh, <laughs> there's always going to be another one. Always. But I do I do love the way that, that this kicked off this new sermon series. I, I think too. it's it going to be so amazing. Good. I Come just want to give see. a shout out that we had uh uptick in our viewership yeah. today. Awesome. I know we had some new guests today. We did. Yeah. We did. And so I, I know, bef- I don't know... Um, before last service started, yeah, we already. Uh, I I went to the first time guest area, and I was mm-hmm. like, "Ooh, we're gonna have to order new gifts." Yeah, we're gonna yeah. Run out. I know. Yeah. I so, love that. Yeah, it's awesome. We love seeing. Um, we just like last week we had nine hundred and ten people yeah. in attendance. Here yeah, woo, yeah. On just a random just Sunday, a regular Sunday. Yeah, because God is. He's doing things. He is doing and the God thing, things. The coolest part about it is that none of us even care remotely about those numbers if those numbers weren't attached to a name and right, every name has right. a story. Yep. And that's yep. what we want. And it's the coolest part about it is is that we're preaching the same thing um, that, you, you know, it's it's – it meets us where yeah. we are. Yeah. It's not hard. It's not, the worship is not hard. It's just meeting you where you are. And everything that we, we pray on a Sunday is that he invades our space. And that's what happened. I feel like the last few weeks, it's just, Absolutely. he's invading the space that we're given. Him. Yes. And I, and I love that. So if you have never joined us in person, we want to invite you yes. to come. You can seek any of us out. Hey, come sit with me. I get a gift sit, if no, you come sit with me. She gets hangry. <laughs> no, come not. sit with me. <laughs> Find me. I'd be needing some snacks. Or Trey. You can be his new best friend. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know if he funny. keeps snacks though, but we're gonna have to start getting behind. I've always snacks. got snacks. Listen, Y'all I brought, know food's my I love language. Snacks. I just She's got eat peanut butter and crackers. Listen, my mama calls them nabs. That's what they're called. That's nabs. what I call them. That's mm-hmm. what they are. Yep. Nabs. Look, yeah. country nabs. Oh, I need okay. some nabs. Right. Peanut butter crackers. I never heard that. That's just what nabs? she calls them. Nabs. Yeah, that's what they mm-hmm. are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You in the country? Mm-hmm. I'm from the country, girl. I grew up and I like it that way. Okay. okay. Continue on. She had to do that because Mason's usually the one that just pops in with a random song. Yeah, I but. know no movie quotes, but I can do some songs. Mm-hmm. But we are so, so blessed each week for you yes. all to join us and to to watch us because I'm sure our faces are great for our viewers on YouTube. Love it. Um, and that we circle back to the sermon and we do this for you guys because yeah. like Amy said, she took something different from what Bethany yep. and I took and, and vice versa. And, and that's going to be different for everyone. And that's why we do this and we love it. So um, we hope that you guys will tune in next yep. week for episode four and we're going to keep going in this uh come and see come and see this but come and see this and come moon see might this. have a t-shirt you know we we might have a t-shirt i do love know. a good t-shirt i do too we I all do, do. Mm-hmm. so yeah. right. so I mean, come sit with one of us with a new t-shirt on that's right it's kind of like if there's not a picture on facebook did it really happen if it doesn't make it on a t-shirt did it, it really did, happen yes there you, you know go. what and we came up with that on the podcast so we get credit yeah we get the first t-shirts yeah amen to that <laughs> amen <laughs> to that well check out the sermon if you haven't and we'll see you back next time